Hi, this is Jeremy Poole, and in this video I'm going to give you a brief overview of some of the new features in the latest version of Recollector for Windows. Recollector was originally written for Windows almost 10 years ago, and it's beginning to show its age. And so, over the last year, a new version was written from the ground up and was released in June of 2017. And so, uh, let me show you some of the things that are different in this new version. Um, one thing is just the look and feel of the product. It looks more like a modern program. It has what's called a flat design or a modern user interface. Things like buttons, they're shown as, as, as simple flat objects. Um, if I for a moment bring up the way the previous version looked, you'll see the buttons, they have this 3D appearance. Lots of use of shadows, an attempt to make objects look like real physical world objects. Um, the current mode of thinking in the UI world says that's not such a good idea. Interfaces should be simple and functional, and so that's what you see here. Unicode. The new version supports the ability to have text in any language, in any alphabet. The previous version only supported the Latin alphabet. So if you, for example, collected Chinese coins and you wanted to include the Chinese text on those coins in a field in your database, you were out of luck. Let me show you how that works. Um, let me just open up a, uh, an editor window here. And just for purposes of demonstration, I'll open up. I'll go down to a uh, blank area here. And I'm going to copy in some text in Greek. So here we see the use of Greek characters. Or if you had um, a Chinese alphabet, you wanted to put in Chinese characters. Here's Chinese characters. The Mac version of Recollector always had this Unicode support, but the Windows version did not. Now it does. All right, let's cancel out of here. And let's move on to zooming images. The image viewer that Recollector has used to show you images either in a thumbnail size or if you clicked a button at the bottom, it would blow them up to their full resolution, however high the resolution was of the image that you had included. But there was no way to look at resolution levels in between, at zoom levels in between. So now you can do that. There's a zoom bar here and it lets you sort of gradually zoom in and out. So you can sort of look at any level of detail that you want at your images. Tooltips. The new version makes pretty heavy use of tooltips. These are uh, helpful bits of information that pop out at you when you hover over a certain part of the user interface. For example, um, this particular collection we're looking at here, as you can see in the lower left, it's sorted now by ID number. The simplest way to sort it by something different is to double click, or I, sorry, just a, just a click on the heading of one of the uh, columns. And if you hover over a column, you'll notice a tooltip pops up saying, click to sort by region. So we can do that, and now we've sorted by region. If I want to go back to ID number, click here to sort by ID number. Or the buttons um, give you tool tips to tell you, you know, what they will do if you interact with them. Um, if you go, let's actually go to a slightly different record and let's go into the editor. The same tool tip kind of help is true in the editor. So if you um, hold your mouse over um, anything that's highlight for one of these special hyperlinks, it tells you what kind of link it is. In addition, if you hover over an image uh, in an image field, it gives you a little thumbnail of that image. And the same is true in the item details um, field. If you hover over anything that's a hyperlink, you get some uh, a tooltip that tells you what that's all about. Um, for tooltip for hyperlinks that are extra information or footnote style hyperlinks, hovering over them gives you, in fact, the full text of the footnote. You can still click as you could in the previous version to see the footnote at the bottom, but you often don't need to do that. You can simply hover over and see what the text is of the footnote. 
editor preferences. Okay, let's go back and open the editor again. It used to be that if you wanted to change characteristics of the editing environment, you had to go to the preferences dialog, which you got to from the collection window. You had to go to the editor tab in there, choose your choice, and then go back out of there and then back into the editor. Now the editor-related preferences are directly accessible from the editor window. So if I want to change, for example, to a different font, I can simply do it right there. So easier access to that kind of functionality. Drag and drop for lists. There are a lot of places in the user interface that use lists. Um, for example, if you want to specify what fields to show in the list view, <clears throat> you get a dialog that has a couple of lists. These you used to manipulate by selecting items and then clicking one of these arrow buttons to move items to the left or to the right or up or down. But now you can, you can still do that, but you can also simply drag and drop. And so I could take a couple of items from here and I could drag and drop them anywhere I want to there. And the same if I want to rearrange the order, I can simply use drag and drop. And that's true anywhere in the user interface where you see lists of items that need to be manipulated. Finally, managed access. There is a new feature in the program on the file menu called managed access. There's a separate video uh, that describes managed access in detail, so I'm not going to do that here, but I'm just going to describe what it is. This is a feature that's intended for situations where you have more than one person at more than one computer who wants to access a particular collection and be able to manage it, to update it, to make changes to it. It used to be if you had a collection database stored in some shared area on the cloud or on a um, network disk, that there was a danger that if two people tried to make changes at the same time, one person might clobber the changes that the other person had recently made. Managed access protects against that. If you turn managed access on for a collection, only one person at a time can make changes to the collection. Many people can look at the collection, can use it, but they are looking at it in read-only mode. And so there's no danger that one person will make changes um, that will destroy what another person has done. This is particularly useful for situations like small galleries or museums that want to use Recollector to manage their collection, but want to have more than one person make changes to that collection. So that's the end of this quick summary. There are other features as well, but these were the, the highlights of the major ones. Um, if you want, if you run the current, uh, sorry, the older version of Recollector for Windows and you want to try out the new version or use a new version, go to check for updates on the help menu and a web browser will come up and show you whether you're up to date. And if not, it'll let you download and install this new version. Um, your collection data and your license key will not be lost. You'll simply be automatically migrated to this uh, new and more functional version of Recollector. By the way, this new version, because of some of the features it uses, only runs on versions of Windows from Windows 7 and later. If you're still running Windows 95, 98, Windows XP, those older versions, you cannot use this newer version. The older version of Recollector is still available, still supported, but uh, you would first need to upgrade to at least Windows 7 before you can upgrade to this latest version of Windows. So thank you for watching.